Welcome to the Overreact Podcast, proudly sponsored by Johnny Walker, a bold drink to be enjoyed in moderation and drinking responsibly, not to be sold for persons under the age of 18. Now, in a society that tries to put women in a box, let's overreact. Let's get bold. It's your girl, Momo Hoya. Excited to be back in studio. It's your girl, Lush Angela, and I feel bold today because I'm wearing my favorite color blue and I wore a cinched belt to cinch my waist so I can sit up like hey. Angela. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your girl, Angela One Boy, of course, rocking pretty in pink because pink is that one color that makes me feel powerful. I feel you, girl. I feel you, girl. It's been seven months since we've been sat on... Seven in front of them, months. I can't believe seven it. months. Seven yeah. months, and shout out to everyone who's watched. We've reached over five hundred thousand uh, streams on all their platforms. So that's nice to know that you're still supporting and listening to us. And of course, we're back here at our base at Kofisi, one of Africa's leading podcast arenas. Um, and it's how does it feel about to be back in studio, ladies? I'm super excited. Um, I'm super excited to be showing up boldly. And yeah, this year has done the thing on me. It has. But it's a good thing that we're wrapping up being back here and releasing another fire season. So keep it here. Absolutely. Another fire season of bold voices and bold women's stories. 100%. How are you feeling being back in the studio? Well, actually, for you, you're always <laughs> I'm in always the studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's just a different home. Exactly. I almost lost my mojo. Yeah. So I have a few more episodes to practice. Okay. And I bring back my Angela and boy. Um, it feels good to be back, but I, I mean, for those who um, follow us at Sister Speaks 254 on all platforms, we'll know that just because we haven't been on the mic doesn't mean that we've been completely silent. Um, we've had uh, an amazing last four months uh, where, uh, for those who may not follow us, we started an event called Hills Connect, and it was just an opportunity of uh, bringing women together to connect and we brought a range of speakers uh, from those people who will be familiar with, so Janet Bogwa, Adele Onyango, Patricia Kihoro. We got a chance to bring back uh, previous um, guests that we had on yes. the podcast. So um, we had Wangari Mushiri, we had Ajuma, we had Nadia Abdallah, and it was really nice to just do that in a, and have other people, I guess what we do in the studio alone, yes. and just have other That's people true. like, yeah, interacting with us. So in essence, this is, um, that kind of set the pace of what uh, today's uh, episode and, and the whole season of uh, season four, uh, which will really focus on the progressive portrayal of women who keep boldly walking into what their purpose is and whatever that looks like in their own journey. So we really are intentional this season uh, with the kind of conversations we want to have and the kind of focus we want to highlight in terms of the women that we're going to feature. Absolutely. And if you're new here, uh, we are listening or we, we are seeing so many stories of women uh, walking in their paths boldly. And this is what Johnny Walker is all about. Exactly. Finishing the year boldly and walking. No matter what, bang that door, girl, and yeah. keep walking Absolutely. in your truth. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, just what uh, Lash was sharing about Sister Speaks, we've not been silent, we've not been quiet, we've been making moves, we've gone with our Heels for Pads initiative in Yeri, where we have included girls and women who not necessarily uh, belong to our community, but, you know, we've converted our community of, you know, Heels Connectors, yes, Sister Speaks, and we have extended that and uh, supported them in so many ways, um, like, you know, life skills, mentorship, uh, menstrual hygiene conversations, and just reminding them, you know, be confident and walk boldly in the direction of your dreams. Exactly. Say it, sis. So, I mean, keeping with the theme of walking bold and being bold and doing bold, ladies, I'm just curious from yourselves, what are some examples in your life where you truly felt like you were taking a bold step? You go first. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. ask any questions. You set the pace. <laughs> well, I mean, I think for me, just making the transition uh, from from 
living in states pretty much my whole life to making that leap to Kenya. Um, if you've ever heard my story, uh, my move to Kenya was very unplanned. And let me just say, anyone that has tried to come from diaspora to Nairobi, Nairobi is not for the faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Nairobi, <-ry>. hey, Nairobi, <laughs> Nairobi. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for me that was a bold move. And I and I know a lot of my friends and family were so confused, like, oh, why why do you, why would you want to leave America and go to Kenya? Is this your ninth year? Yes, it is. It is. Wow. But. Um, you know, I think living in Kenya has brought out such a different side of me. I think so many of the things that I do here, you know, between what we do as Sister Speaks and Heels for Pads, uh, what I do on radio, what I do in fashion design, emceeing, and the caliber of events that I've been able to host, I don't think I'd be doing that in the U.S. There's, there's a different side that Kenya has, you know, brought out of me. So definitely that would be one moment where I was bold. Okay. And you still walk in boldly. Hey. Yeah, I love it. What about you? Mm -hmm. I think for mine, I'll, I'll piggyback. Um, mm -hmm. Me and Angela have a similar story. Funny enough, we're both Angela's as well. <laughs> um, so I think for me, uh, well, I've, I would say boldly walking back into moving back in Kenya. So uh, for those who don't know my story as well, um, you, I used to, I used to, I was born in Kenya, but I lived in UK. And then after my first year of graduating, I came and worked in Kenya. But then I left because, you know, young, I'm nilipi, so I'm going to go, you know. <laughs> You're paid uh, in exposure. <laughs> I'm paid in exposure. <laughs> and it wasn't enough, as you all know. So, um, but like six years later, that feeling of wanting to come back was still lingering. Um, and it's harder to move when, uh, for you, it was um, on a random, it was on a whim, yes. I guess, right? Mm -hmm. While for me, it was planning. And so um, for those who are unaware, my family live in the UK, so I'm leaving everything that I've known, like my parents, my sister, my friends, people I've grown up with, and willingly knowing I'm going to do it. So <coughs> um, just like putting everything together and then at some point thinking, yeah, maybe now is not the time to do it. So um, I'm glad that I went ahead with it. I remember my mom once asking me, so what do you want to do like in this coming year? And I didn't plan it in my mind. I was just like, I think I, I, think I need to just finalize with this Kenya thing. If it's not the right thing for me, then um, I've, I can always come back. So again, like you, I'm still boldly walking hey. and living here. So wow. yeah. I'm your stories, uh, your stories. Uh, we've seen so many women uh, traversing the globe, uh, fearlessly, some of them being digital nomads. I love this particular chick. Uh, she's African-American, uh, migrated to Bali, bought a whole villa, and now she's just created a haven for African-American women, actually black women, you know, who want to work remotely and they just want to design a different life away from what the society has designed for us, which is clock 30, get married, mm. pop babies, mm -hmm. make a home, mm. uh, get to menopause, de -de -de -de. that's it. Yeah, so I, I love her boldness. And my word for this day, I mean, for this year was, I'm going to be bold regardless of what will happen. And since March, I have seen my life just surrendering and just being bold in and doing just walking indoors whether I feel like I belong or not um I think it has been a great shift in my life I'm back in tech girls hey, hey. yes I'm I back. love it yes yeah, so uh, I've always you know away from the entrepreneurship journey I'm very passionate about technology babes, women in STEM. And um, this is the year I jumped right back in. She's not like, said something, guys. What? But there's <laughs> one thing my husband bold at doing, wearing bold colors, right? <laughs> oh, and it's amazing. really the irony <laughs> is that she's won a bold color today. So yes. she's been really rocking bold colors. So you missed that part out. <laughs> yes, I've been bold <laughs> showing up. Um, on my birthday, I also entered a you know, soft, sexy girl era. I love so it there's not turning down. So we go bold, bold, keep bold. Yeah. yeah, keep yeah. keep going up and up. And why yeah. not? Why, why not? not? Why, why not? not? Let's keep showing up. Yeah, you know? yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. huh, let's talk about women in our lives that have either, in one way or another, 
broken down the barriers. Uh, you are in fashion, you're in media, um, you're in media entrepreneurship, I mean tech entrepreneurship. Um, maybe talk about women you have seen uh, boldly maybe craft or break the ceiling and turn it into flows or a woman who has lifted you um, in, in, your, in your darkness, either directly or indirectly. Um, I talked about my tech journey coming back. Uh, this is one bay called Esther Kinudia. Um, she's one of the youngest, um, you know, ladies that um, work for the big tech, you know, from Google to TikTok to Meta. And now she took a bold move and just quit and to start entrepreneurship. So um, I want to shout you out, Esther. You have you're very young, but you're my hero. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, for me, I'm going to talk about a woman that we actually featured in Hills Connect, um, who's none other than Teresa Jiroge. Um, she is the founder of an organization called Clean Stuff. Getting goosebumps from her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too, and yeah. uh, wow, mm. um, just in a nutshell, if you've never heard of her, um, you know, for her, she had a situation where she was wrongly accused of something. Uh, she was innocent, but locked up. Uh, but while being inside of, you know, prison, she met so many other women with their children. And through that experience, uh, she came out and didn't just say, let me go back to living my own normal life. But she stood up for other women that deserve a second chance at life. And for me, that definitely was a bold move, even just going through that experience and surviving prison and um, taking the time to learn how to empower other women and allow them to have a clean start. Uh, that's definitely a woman for me that has taken bold strides. And also it's it's hard to bounce back when you've been put down. Um, so yeah, that that is my woman uh, who has moved in bold strides. We see you, Teresa. I love that. Yeah. Of course, um, sticking to the Kenyan theme, Wangari Madai will forever be just someone, you know, I was thinking about her and I thought she's actually the, queen of the OG of climate action before climate action. <laughs> yes, yeah. became, I was thinking the same thing. Became the hashtag that we all talk about. Before and the white men took it over. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just always think like, if she didn't fight for a green belt, a belt movement and put it all together, of course right now I feel like if she came back alive, she'd just faint because so much <laughs> has changed from what she was fighting right. for, mm -hmm. especially what is happening in Uhuru Park right now. Um, but uh, I think I like just having the, the audacity, really, and the courage to fight uh, people who look uh, completely opposite from her, who are not really comprehending why she this is important mm -hmm. to save these uh, Green Belt movement uh, spaces and uh, what they do for the ecosystem and sometimes I think people are fighting that well, instead of seeing it as it's not just about the ecosystem it also affects us right um, so I, I admire that a lot because honestly it's really hard when uh, to remain bold when everyone is fighting against you it's a really difficult thing to do and to still stand your ground, no matter whether people are walking with you or walking against you. And so I have Definitely so much, so yeah, so, so much hard. admiration because yeah. most of us would be like, <clears throat> OK, cool. Especially tried, at that time, I feel yeah. like climate change wasn't such a mainstream topic the way yeah. it is now. So a lot of people didn't even understand, like, what is this woman sacrificing her life for being yes. dragged and stripped and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I can recall this thing that says an old man plants a tree, but not for his shade, but the shade yes. of uh, generations to come. come. Yeah. I feel like that's what she did. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as much as we are doing so much injustices and, and everything, I feel like she was so futuristic. Like she was living 10, I mean, 30, ahead 50 years time. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And here we are talking crazy about carbon credits and... Sikuya kupanda miti? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you, why you planting trees? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's beautiful to see her daughter carry on that legacy. Shout out to Wanjiro Madai. Yes. yes. Uh, for me, it has to be every woman who is doing beyond ordinary life doings. Okay. Whether you have you know, a domestic violence um, victim, whether you have you know, left that abusive uh, relationship, that sucky mm. job, 
whether you've gone against the green of the societal box, girl, you're bold. Keep doing beyond Give ordinary life <laughs> things. I celebrate you, especially women who look like us, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, keep walking, girl. Keep walking. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us to share facts that we've each found, and we're going to blindly react, right? Um, so maybe I should go first, and as I've set the pace, allow me to use my phone. Right. When, um, when do you think the first woman uh, who was elected as the head of state or as a president, what year was that and which country? <laughs> uh, I want to say Liberia. Okay. Um, what, what year? Um, in the 2000s. Okay. And I was going to say in the, maybe in the 90s. And who, where? Where? Um, I don't know. I was going to say somewhere in Europe. Okay. So Angela wins in terms of location. Mm -hmm. uh, you said 19 something. Yeah, no, yeah. 19. she wins. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the actual. It was a blind reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so the actual. Uh, your, I think the reason why you said Liberia is because it's the first African woman. Oh, yes, to, from be Liberia. to have a president. Yeah, and that's uh, Ellen Johnson mm -hmm. Sirleaf. Mm -hmm. um, but the first uh, woman to become a president. And to be elected as a president is from Iceland, and she was elected in 1980 to 1996. So she is the first woman in the world to be democratically elected as a head of state. And 1980 is just five years um, added on to my age, so that's 43 years ago. It's not that far wow. away, you know, um, and it, that's crazy. And unfortunately, we still live in a world of many firsts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine is connected to an initiative or a project that we are very close, uh, that is very near to our hearts, which is, you know, ensuring that every woman um, has a dignified menstrual experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to throw this back at you. Uh, who was the first woman who invented a sanitary pad? Um, it was created by a black woman. Mm -hmm. and Maria. Oh, no. Maria, I think is her name. Oh, gosh, why is it? And it was a belt. It's a sanitary mm -hmm. belt. Her name is Maria, I think. Man, why would it? Mary. <laughs> Mary. Her name is Mary. I just don't Where know her she name. From? She's from the States. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, it was created in the 1927, 1930, around that time. You're right. Mary Beatrice Kenner. Okay. Yes. You yes. win, girl. Yeah. You get a Johnny Walker. <laughs> I get a Johnny Walker. <laughs> Johnny Walker for me. Johnny Walker for you. Mm -hmm. What year? Uh, in the 1920s, yeah. I bet um, the year is not known, but okay. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Uh, so mine um, is still around uh, politics. So what was the first country to give women's right to vote? Ooh. You could either Iceland? get the, the country or <laughs> <laughs> the country or the year. <laughs> It's the, the gender equality um, <laughs> capital of the, the world. first nation in the world. So first nation in the world to, to give, give women, women the right to The vote. UK? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. let, me, let me guess. Let me give you a hint. It starts with an N. Zealand. No way. Huh? No New way. New Zealand? No, yes. <laughs> yeah. New Zealand is, is the first country to actually grant women the right to vote. Okay. Um, yeah. Interesting. What year? That was 18, um, let me see, that was, was it in the 1800s, 1863. Wow. Amazing. But the That's first president to be elected globally was 1980. I remember they have currently just can we have a moment for that? Just the other like, day. It took 120 or 100 plus years. <sighs> we, have, we have come a long way, ladies. We have a That's long way. The least. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ladies, just keep boldly walking. Don't stop, as Mo was saying, and to anyone who's going through any barriers or anything, any belts holding you back. <laughs> Instead, turn it into something that cinches you and walk boldly and confidently. So um, I guess in that topic of um, women we admire, who are the women you'd love to sit on the table with? And who could we invite, actually, um, to sit on the table in this particular table who've taken like bold steps, um, inspiring <coughs> others. And in a way, they are people we would love to mirror or we would love to learn from one or two. 
Um, I mean, you already touched on one guy in my life. That's definitely someone that's always been on my list of women, you know, dead or alive that I'd love to sit down with. Uh, Princess Diana, too. I think that woman is someone who, you know, I mean, her story, anyone that knows Princess Diana... Um, if just, you don't, go watch The Crown. <laughs> uh, but just being in such a high place, but also being able to connect with the people and, you know, using her, her privilege to help serve her community and help serve others. Of course, my girl Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. I, yeah. um, <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> keep walking, keep Oprah. talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my two queens. Like limit on the Johnny Walker. <laughs> this is this is one boy talking, guys. Not Angela oh, from Cabin. So <laughs> start again. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely mm. Oprah. Um, someone who I think. She, you know, started as a reporter. She started in TV and she was told, no, nah, you don't have the face for TV. You can't do this. Mm. You can't do that. But definitely a woman who stepped out on faith and, and knew her own value and knew her own worth. Yeah. And kept going. Uh, her level of consistency and the business mogul that she is today is really, really inspiring. So if I could sit across from someone, uh, that would definitely be one of them. Okay. Um, I think mine is uh, different. I don't want to sit with one woman. I want to sit with all the heads of tech uh, who are either like the, the likes of Cheryl and just have a conversation in terms of what's going to happen when we see all this emerging tech. Where is the voice of women from design, from research, from how it's going to help women? Because tech is very male heavy and it's coded either with a white man's um you know data so how do we include uh, women who look like me the girls we see in trukana how do they become included especially in the ai space data science and all that i want to sit in that room with those women yeah i was thinking so i was thinking about maybe what we're trying to do and maybe what I feel I'd love to learn and two people came to mind and actually number one is um, Ellen uh, Johnson Sirleaf, the first Liberian politician, female politician, but also the first African female. And I just, I mean, I'm, ar I'm around, but I mean, I live in Africa, so I'm around African men. So mm -hmm. I'm just imagining in a political setting uh, what it was for her to constantly just be the only African woman trying to obviously fight for her rights for her country and change the scenario around that and then and also just still being boldly confident in her own right and her own while whilst people are probably doubting her because she's female and then um, Malala um, yes. You know the youngest uh, Nobel uh, Prize, a uh, Peace uh, Prize winner, and you know she comes from an environment where education is not valued from a female point mm -hmm. of view, and she's still going, and she's only twenty six, guys. Wow, she is only yeah. twenty six. So, I think just those two people being in an environment where they are constantly probably having to prove themselves or had to prove themselves. Just what was that like, you know? And what can I learn from them to help the girls that we talk to, or even the events that we create? How do we, you know, instill that? And yeah, one of my favorite quotes uh, from Malala. She says, "We understand the power of our voice the moment we're silenced." Mm. You know, and I think we're reminded of that on the different journeys that we go to to these marginalized communities and realizing these girls may not you know, be familiar with hearing women being bold and speaking out, Yes. you know, and so I think one of the missions that we have is to teach, you know, girls and women the power of their own voice, Yeah, Absolutely. you know, and, yeah. and speaking out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so obviously Johnny Walker is about bold flavors and they're perfect for uh, celebration scenarios. So we've been celebrating other women. It's time to toot our own horn, sisters. So mm. as we said that we've been away from sitting in this table for seven months, what are some of the things I guess we you have learned in this last seven months or even in the year because we're coming to the end of the year um, mm. that you want to celebrate or share that can inspire somebody else to, you know, be audacious um, in their walk of life? I think for me is just showing up. 
uh, we've been given the free will to, to show up in whatever way we want, to make decisions that we want. Um, I look at 2023 in the eye and it asked me, did you die? Ooh. I did not die. <laughs> and I'll keep grinding till next year, boldly. I love it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific in the things that you've done personally or things that we've achieved in our organization that you feel has also empowered you to walk more boldly in one way or another? Uh, even in my closet when I'm crying, I'm still bold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I allowed myself that I'm not okay and it's okay not being okay. Yeah. So even in my lows and my highs, my micro wins, I boldly showed up and I'm, I'm, I'm thank you, Monica, for being bold. Oh, that's yes. Looking nice. at the woman in the mirror. Yes. yes. Um, I think just even um, on our mission with Heels for Pads, uh, when we look at the fact that we've crossed over, you know, mm -hmm. 22,000 plus women and girls that we've been able to reach around the country, yeah. that's powerful. Like, that's a big number. And... And still in counting. Mm. And with almost a whole year hiatus because of the COVID. Yes. And in the, middle, uh, in the midst of the whole chaos, we were able to traverse the country. So um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of us. Yes. Let's continue being bold and showing up for the girls, um, you know, behind us. And they one day will say um, who I am because of the women who showed up for me. Mm -hmm. And that's us. And, uh, um, you know, feedback that I've just gotten from people that do watch our journey is, you know, probably they'll never meet another group of women coming into their classrooms and telling them this is how you use mm. a powder. This is how you do this. Because a lot of them are, you know, unfortunately orphaned or they don't have mentors in their life. So, you know, I don't take that lightly, our mission and what we do. Yeah, absolutely. I think I would say... Um, we, as you said, there was like a year, almost two years of not being able to interact with people comfortably, um, hugging people. I still, yeah. I'm still a bit of like <laughs> fist bump me instead. I don't really want to touch your You're hands. You're gangster forever. <laughs> I'm gangster forever. <laughs> so um, I think in a world where we weren't able to connect and weren't able to do all that stuff. And then um, Sister Speaks, which is predominantly all about events initially um coming back to the event space heavily this year and just using angela's uh, viewpoint of sharing things that we were given feedback so like with the hills connect uh, when we did our last one i didn't even tell you this lady was like what am i gonna do now with my wednesdays like this is my go to this is Aww. my go-to this is the things that this is how I like to spend my Wednesday. Like, and so she was asking, oh, so when are you coming back? When, when's the first one in, in January? I was like, I'm not sure, right? It might be February. She's like, no, 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 you have to start in January. And so yeah. I, think, I think even just being bold enough to decide to um, like go back into the event space, boldly reaching out to these different speakers that we had the mm -hmm. opportunity to connect with throughout mm. the 16 weeks mm -hmm. um i think that for me is a highlight that i want to celebrate and put out there and also just very glad that uh we have still been able to continue telling the story with sister speaks and hills for pads so yeah, yeah it's been a it's a, been a good run i yes. know and in the spirit of body stepping uh how are you choosing to step into the New Year's, you know, crossover is almost here. So how are you going to boldly step into how 2024? How am I boldly stepping into 2024? Mm -hmm. Fearless. Um, you know, I think if there is something that you've been wanting to do that you haven't done. Um, for me, I don't have a specific fearless but I, uh, item, but I always want to keep that mentality of being fearless. Mm. Amazing. I think mine will be... If anyone's watched the Limitless Pill, um, I just literally want to be like that, invincible, like just going for it. And whether we fail, whether I fail, just literally waking up and dusting myself and keep going. Mm -hmm. And I think where I am right now, I'm OK with if things don't work out, because I believe that what's just, just being OK with the only person in the room fighting for something that I believe in, even if people are not going to before me yeah. yeah i think my bold step i'll be stepping into five for five 
if I don't see it in my five-year plan, I will not spend five minutes of my time with it. If I cannot, any action that I make or anything that I do, it doesn't change someone's life or five other people, I don't have any business doing it. I like that. Yeah. That's very, that's a very good strategy. Mm-hmm. Five for five. Five, five, five. five yes. for five. Yeah. Like, why are you breathing in my direction? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Um, That's the move. I love it. I love. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in at the first episode of season four, which has been recorded here at Kofisi, Africa's workspace leading provider. And I'm so excited that you can now listen to every episode at Capital FM on Wednesday from 10 p.m. You can connect with us and interact with us on Twitter, on Instagram on TikTok at SisterSpeaks254. And also we have a page specifically for our podcast at Overy, our podcast on Instagram. So let's get connected and make sure to tune in next week. And of course, this episode has been proudly sponsored by Johnny Walker, a bold drink to be enjoyed in moderation. We want you to drink responsibly. And of course, not for persons under the age of 18. Uh, Don't drink and drive. And we always encourage you, drink better, not more. Absolutely. It. And let it, let's end it on a bold note. Whatever you're bold, ensure it's in moderation. Ladies, it's your girl, Mo. And it's your girl, Lash Angela. And it's your girl, Angela Wamboy. Let's, let's overreact. overreact. Boldly. Mm-hmm.